but you put Kenneth Rose in that automobile. Oh, God. And that same officer, even if I'm in a neighborhood where it is an affluent neighborhood, they yeah. then really are going to have a, uh -oh. you know, why are you here type thing. So I can't be in either place. I can't be in a neighborhood where I could be living in an affluent neighborhood mm -hmm. because they wonder, well, how are you able to live here? Exactly. I can't be in a neighborhood that's just considered to be a normal neighborhood for the people that look like me because then you say, well, you live in a dangerous area. Yes, yeah, so you've got to be that type of person. You can't win. You can't but this win. is the thing. I must stress this because we have to be fair, isn't it? Not all police officers and law enforcement, not all people have that mind mindset not all people are racist so we have to say that because it's the truth but for the ones that are or they have all these issues and and discriminations against black men especially this is an issue it's a problem Carol's. and and all right I, I know today's show topic is mainly as i was saying the sexual harassment side but i wanted to mention that because that is scary and as i said earlier any type of discrimination or harassment, it is a form of power that they're trying to have over somebody else. And I must say, I'm, I think that this, this topic is something that someone somewhere, male and female, can identify with probably from personal experience or the account of a friend or a loved one. Because you just think, my God, it, it really does affect people. And usually it seems to be first and foremost in the workplace, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, kind of. yeah, it does. And, yeah. and one last thing I wanted to say about that as we move forward in the show. Mm. In many cases, I don't believe all the officers that are even involved in these shootings are uh, racist or who no. are. Because no. I think what ends up happening is that adrenaline rush mm. that they lose control for a mm. second. I tell people all the time that, you know, four seconds in your life can change your life. You can get Absolutely. upset and and slam your hand and you can break your hand. You can put uh -huh. your hand through a wall. You can be so upset with a, a, a loved one that you can punch them and they could fall down and bump their heads and die. Mm -hmm. You know, just the officers that are involved and a perfect example of it was what happened in Dallas. When the thing started there were reports that there were multiple shooters there were reports that the shooter was coming from one garage but it mm -hmm. actually he was shooting from a community college on wow. and so there was so much confusion there mm -hmm. that they basically for a moment they were out of control yeah yep. and that's what happened even in minnesota with that officer he basically was told i have a license to carry permit and i have a weapon mm -hmm. and in his head black man gun he wasn't even digesting anything else that nothing was going on. nothing i mean i saw do you remember seeing last week and a few weeks ago the poor you know the, the guys more black men we have to say that have been killed at the hands of the police and the girlfriend she went live she was doing facebook live that's the one i'm talking I couldn't about yeah i couldn't believe that I just was like, oh, my God. Is it Philando Castile? Yes. Is that right? Yeah, apologies. I don't want to get his name wrong. But I just thought, my God, I couldn't believe that. I just, I was, I saw that little snippet of video and I just thought, wow. And you know how respectful she was talking to him? Even after he had shot her boyfriend in the arm repeatedly, not just once. And he's dying. He's sitting in the car dying right there before her eyes. And this police officer still standing there. You can see it on the video. Still standing there pointing the gun right at him. Right at his head. And oh, he's just... in full panic mode. He's shaking. He what? knows he has discharged his weapon. He the four-year-old child in the back seat and a woman sitting next to the person you shot. Goodness. He was in full panic mode. And really? they, any officer, black, white, Asian doesn't matter that discharges mm -hmm. their weapon in a way like that needs to be held accountable yes, and Absolutely. you mentioned that the the video mm -hmm. the 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 primary subject for the show as far as sexual harassment mm -hmm. that's something that hasn't been videoed or recorded to the point to where we are with shootings and so people think that's not real yeah a lot of times mm -hmm. And that's sad to me that a male or female, and it's usually mostly women, yes. can be in the workplace and have a slimy, cruddy, mm. whether they're a co-employee mm. or a management person, make them feel like crap. And mm. I hope they start 
putting this stuff out and saying, well, hey, this should. is what's happening. They need to. People, please, if you are experiencing anything like that, please, please, please don't suffer in silence. Speak up because they ain't allowed to do that. And you should not feel that you should suffer in silence because they know some people are so nasty. And you know what? There's different types of it because... I, I notice as well, it tends, a lot of women, especially like for women, if they're in the workplace and they, they if they get pregnant, for example, they they get made to feel like, oh, we shouldn't have taken you on, you know, if they feel like they've got to hide it because they know that they're going to be either rushed, you know, pushed out of their job or they're not going to be able to come back to the job in the capacity that they had it because they're like, oh, well, you're a mother now and, you know, you've got too much responsibilities and we need someone who's going to stay late and we need this and we need that. They're really going to use it against you kind of thing because I've seen them do that, especially, for example, as well, if you work in a, what is considered a male dominated industry that's another thing where you may be constantly you know coming up against barriers and hitting a glass ceiling almost because they're constantly going to be saying oh but you're a woman and you know why would you want to work in this environment and you know we you know you're not really meant to be here because this is really meant to be for men you, you hear the sarcasm i'm coming out with cameras and i'm just like oh please you know and this is this is all the thing is it? it's all that if you're getting intimidated you got the threatening behavior you got the sexual innuendo or the outright unwanted touching which that is just completely utterly crossing the line leave me alone don't mess with me don't touch me. And well, I've had people who have tried to be a bit slimy like that. And you just think, oh, no, no. And you're just trying to avoid them like the plague. And then you become uncomfortable. And, if, and invariably, you will leave the job if, if it gets to the point. Because you just don't want to deal with their foolishness all the time. And you just think, listen, I'm not interested. Okay? I don't even want to be your friend. Because your behavior is so nasty. And... Oh, and then you find that they've been telling lies about you and trying to spread rumors all because they know that you don't like them because of their behavior, but they won't change their behavior because they're just a nasty, slimy, slime ball. Well, if in the in Europe and in the UK, mm-hmm. are they more lenient when it comes to pregnancy leave? Mm, depending on where you work. And depending on what kind of job you do and so on and so forth, because there are laws against that type of thing. But a lot of, you know, employers and companies can try and bypass those laws if they think, well, especially if, like, for example, if you do something, like, I don't know, a good example is something like a lawyer or, or something like that, where, because those types of jobs, you know, especially if you're working on a big case and, you know, you've got to be really involved and they want you to stay late and all this. And if you've got family commitments, you don't want to be in the office at 10, 12 o'clock at night on a regular basis, do you? You want to go home to your kids and stuff. So those are the types of jobs where they are going to try and make you feel bad, unless, of course, you are the partner of the company or, you know, the managing director or the managing partner or you're a high powered lawyer or barrister or something like that. Then you have that upper hand. But if you're just considered as one of the worker bees, as you say, K-Rose, then they will try and use that against you, especially if you've not been in the job for long. And then you suddenly turn around and say, oh, I'm pregnant. You know, they will be like, oh. We just gave you the job. You just got here and already you want to take time off. And you think, well, I'm telling you now, maybe you're three, four months gone and you, you have to tell them, innit? So that you can start planning maternity leave and all that. But then even if you go on maternity leave, sometimes they try not to let you back in. Well, see, I thought, and this is the, the feeble mind of an American black man we're mm-hmm. talking about. <laughs> I had the, I guess, belief that Europe, i.e. UK also, was more progressive when it comes mm-hmm. to We've had to fight. We've had to fight for cameras. We're still fighting for it. You know, there's some companies you go to and they'll just tell you, listen. And I've, I've even in the past, like friends of mine have, have sort of been scared to say anything. Like, so especially if you've just come out of a job and then you find out you're pregnant and you're looking for another job. You know, I've had girls who have said, listen, I can't say nothing. I'm going to have to wait till I'm really far along, maybe four or five months. Even then, they don't really want to tell the worker because they know, especially if they're not showing. You know, some women don't show until really late. You know, and if you can find a way to keep it a secret for as long as possible, because they know they're going to lose the job or they're going to be demoted, you know, and then when they try and go back, it's going to be issues. It, they, they, are we talking uh, recently within the last few years or it? recently? Yeah. There's, uh, there's people now who are frightened to say, oh, you know, I'm pregnant because they know that that's going to change the whole dynamic. They've been fighting to get this job or to stay in this job for however long. Right. And especially if they've been harassed already in some other capacity. To find that for the workplace to find out that they're pregnant, for example, which is a really good example, they know that's going to give them that's they're going to get hell for that because they'll be like, oh, we shouldn't have taken you on. We knew you were going because listen, I'll tell you this, Carol. I've been to um, places and jobs in the past, and they've asked me, "Have you got children? Are you planning?" On? They'll actually be asked trying to ask you, "Are you planning on getting pregnant soon?" Basically, that's basically what they want to know. If you if you tell them no, then they're like, "Well, are you planning on having a family soon?" Because they want to be able to call on you and use you like cattle. 
Well, so you do say stay, you know, do late hours and all that. Why can we do that? And I'm and I'm saying we, but I, I wouldn't do it. But why mm-hmm. is that done to women? But when you hire a man, you don't mm-hmm. say, "Hey, do you have a family? Do you do you think you're no. going to get your wife pregnant in a few months? Uh, we need to know." And I, I, just think about how stupid that is. Yeah, but that's what they do. I'm telling you, Kevin. I've sat across, you know, from interviewers, and they will ask you, "Do you have children? Do you have family commitments and responsibilities?" They have looked me in my morning. And ask me that. that <laughs> and some of, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. listen, let me tell you. These people are different, you know. That's how they carry on. And you just be looking at them thinking, what does that got to do with the price of fish? I'm here about this job, you know. And they'll, they'll just keep asking you. And you're just thinking, they're always trying to find ways not to, just because you're a woman, it's like, oh, well, you, you, you need the job. Yeah, but we just want to work you into the ground, basically. So, you know, and I'm not being funny. I think, unfortunately, I'm hearing it every day more and more. There's stories about people who finally they've decided to speak out. And, you know, you, you think, oh, my God, you start to hear the true stories. People become finally brave enough to talk, speak out. And they say that if they didn't go along with the situation, they were made to feel like the outsider. You know, they were made to feel like they didn't have a sense of humor, especially if they say, oh, you know, so-and-so he's really creepy, you know, and he's always coming up to me and he's always trying to touch me and he's always trying to get close to me. I've had people do that. It's creepy, k They come up to you and they're trying to touch your hair or touch your shoulder. You say, oh, God, go away. Don't fancy. I'm not interested kind of thing. And, you know, another thing that we, I know it sounds really petty, but they come up to you and they're in your personal space, always trying to invade your personal space. People like they're probably laughing because they know if they've had this happen to them, they know what it's like. And I, one thing that drives me wild, especially don't mess with my things on my desk. Don't be trying to rearrange my computer. If it's lopsided, leave it. I like it like that. <laughs> don't touch it. And people coming up and they're always trying to, you know, touch your things. Oh, just, just oh. Well, but just, they, oh, is creepy. that, and, and I mean, we're getting ready to go to a break, but is that something that is generational also so that you find that it is happening or has happened with older men than it happens with people that are your age? Because I think people that are, our age will still act the same. You know, they, they may not be as blatant because they may not be in power yet. Well, this is the thing. It's um, well, I've I've experienced it from older and the same age as they. The age don't come into it if they're pervy. They're going to be trying that on, and you just say, "Oh no, stay away from me." I don't they, no. I, like, like I said earlier, people, listen. It's all because you caught the eye of someone, and they wanted to have that type of power of you. And like you said, whether it's someone who's not yet in in a higher position, or whether it's a manager or director or the owner of the company or whatever. And like I said, it happens to male and female. I'm just going to stress that again. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, and I hope people understand this, if someone acts this way towards you and you are not in agreement or accepting of that behavior, then, as we know, that is a form of abuse and harassment and you should not accept that. You should not have to put up with that. And if you feel that you have to go and tell somebody, you know, and make a complaint, then please be empowered to go and do that because that's nasty behavior. They need to leave you alone. Because oh, yeah. we don't, you know, I mean, I'm not being funny, but it is, it's, you know, the sexism, the workplace discrimination. Again, you'll go to places and they'll tell you, oh, you're not wearing the appropriate attire. Or like I said earlier, they, they think you're not capable of doing the job. For example, if you're a woman and you're working in what is considered a male dominated environment. I have been funny, but we know that people are starting to go to the extremes of stalking and even violence. Okay, well, we have some stories to share with with the listeners today and as far as i'm concerned these are all things they need to be talked about in the open they need to be discussed more readily and frequently because people need to know they do not have to suffer in silence and then hopefully we can get rid of these nasty people and the those perpetrators perverts as we're going to say will finally realize their behavior just will not be tolerated they need to stop and leave people alone that's disgusting just leave people alone nasty, you know nasty it is. It's, it's wrong. It's people. As you can see, I'm getting very <sighs> hit up and passionate about today's show topic. As per usual, you are listening to the Ask a Vindy Show, and we are about to take a short break. We'll be right back on the other side after this. This next song is very apt because it is a shame, shame, shame.
Hello, y'all. This is Kevin Shine. I am from Writing Sessions America, and you're listening to the Ask a Bonnie Show. Good afternoon and welcome back. You are tuned in to the Ask a Bonnie Show right here on So Metro Radio. Yes, we are broadcasting, simulcasting live.